Welcome back to Breakfast Daily on City TV. Our hashtag is Breakfast Daily. And uh, right now we're going to get into a, a great conversation with a great woman. Now, I'm sure you've wondered, sometimes you see statements that come out of the parliament, Ghana parliament, signed by a certain woman, and you wonder, who is this woman? Who at all is she? Well, the woman whose statements you see with regard to parliamentary business is here with us in studio today. Her name is Kate Addo, and it's my pleasure to welcome her to Breakfast Daily. Good morning, Kate. It's my absolute pleasure to be here. Television has so always excited. been my first love, so I'm really excited to be here. We will talk about <laughs> that, actually. Many people may not know that Kate is actually a journalist by profession. She's a media professional. She has an extensive history in the media, and we'll get into all of that as we chat with her today. Sure. Fantastic to have you. Thank you look you. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Let's you chat. look absolutely fantastic yourself. So Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I can and tell. And your view is to die for. The view is nice, isn't it's it? It's really nice. It, it's got my creative juices flowing. So oh, yeah? It's really nice. Oh, I good. could write a poem just by looking outside of here. Really? <laughs> no, this is great. Nice feedback for us. Mm -hmm. So, Kate, let's chat. Yeah, sure. We'll start off with a bit of background about you, uh, who you are, where you're from, you know, the usual cliché stuff. Then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of your professional sure, life, sure, okay? Sure, 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 sure. Kate Addo, where are you from? I'm from Accra, actually. So, um, I was born in Accra, raised yeah. in Accra, both parents hailing from Accra. I was born on a Sunday, oh. 23rd of July, 1972, to William Addo who is from Usu and Accra, okay. and Juliana Ayi, who is from Accra. Um, I am like, one of Accra, Accra, Accra proper. So proper, my, mom, my, proper. Mom, my mom is from like, Abu Lakpata, she proper Gamashi, um, yes. Accra. She, but okay. my, dad, my dad is from Usu. So when, when you're doing homo work, what, do you go, so you go, Actually, we, you go, we, uh, the thing is that when we are doing homo, well, we do the ga one, <laughs> and then we do the usu one. So you get yes. two. So we get two. So, nice. But this year, this year, we concentrated on the usu one. So 24th August was, was it for us. Okay. Nice. Yes. All right. So you're a ga woman. I'm ga woman. Proudly ga woman. Quintessential. <laughs> Okay, schools in Accra. Where did you attend school? My, my primary education was very checkered. Um, unfortunately, and I don't regret it, yeah. at a very early age, my parents had to go their separate ways. And okay. so, you know, usually when things like that happen, the children sort of become the collateral damage. So I ended up with my grandma. Okay. So I, I started school in Usu, and then I ended up with my mom. So I started schooling for my mom, and then my mom moved to Dansuman, so I had to change schools. Okay. So I don't like too much to talk about, you know, my primary education. But once things sort of settled, I had my secondary education at a Beniza Secondary School, a oh. school that I think that I wouldn't trade for anything because oh that's where I actually learned that um, for you to be successful at anything, you need to have grit before anything else. You need to have a backbone. You need to yes. have convictions and stand by them. So when I went to Ebenezer School, that's when I learned that. Okay. And it was a very good transition for, for me because despite the fact that my parents were not together and uh, I think because my parents were not together, I was a very sheltered child. Okay, yes, really? because everybody tried to sort of like win you over, so everybody was being extra oh. nice to you, so you didn't really get to see things. But were you an only child? I wasn't no. an only, I had a lot of siblings, and the good thing about having older siblings is that they also, especially if they are not in the fray, yeah. sort of protect you. Oh. So my older sisters, who were my dad's kid, and because my dad was who he was, nobody really, you know, was <laughs> wanted to take his side, and so they would protect us, and my grandma would also spoil us a bit, and then my mom would also like me to come and live with her so she would also spoil me a bit and my mom had siblings so it was a very good childhood protected and everything yeah. and then boom I went mm -hmm. to this school and the first That's day I got up. there when I saw people I, I, I remember um, a friend of mine Laurentia she cried <laughs> she oh. said well they brought us <laughs> because <laughs> we didn't have the time understand you know a lot of things but I, I think it's one of the things that I remain eternally grateful to God for so I had my secondary okay. education there I was wow. very brilliant I was also very troublesome <laughs> but I didn't get into like <laughs> real trouble just you know the usual well, what, what kind of things did you get into? No, I would school? I would get in trouble because I would talk too much and ah. I would laugh at people and I was very diminutive, but you couldn't bully me. I remember when I was, I went to Form 1, I was 12 years. Yes. And you had people who were 19. In Form 1? Because they had gone through middle school. 
So they had finished middle school okay. and they had come to form one. You know, I did all levels. Yes. So we had people who were a bit older. Okay. And, they, and then we had people. So, so, so let's say someone's 20 and he's in form three mm. and he's trying to bully a 12 year old. This, this guy, I don't remember his name. And then he was trying to bully him. I said, No way. And then he said, I'm playing with him. And I remember telling him, Am I a dog? And then when I said, Oh, that was this small girl who's all over the <laughs> place. Like, okay, we can hear boom. Hey, boom, 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 sir. So, so I, had, I had that replication. But I think because I was also book smart, it sort of helped. Helped. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, sort of, I was sort of like, yeah, I had a balance, some <laughs> sort of balance. You hit on something though. You like to talk a lot. Your your career now is kind of put that to good use. You know, I mean, you have to communicate. I you have to, to talk, communicate. Yes. I and the 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 irony about my personality is that I'm um, diverted. So people. So, People's initial reaction to me is that, oh, she must be an extrovert. She likes to talk. Yes. But I actually don't like to talk like talk. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then sometimes people say, oh, she's not as friendly as we thought. But it's only because I'm so shy and I, I don't like to talk. I, at first, I didn't believe you when you said you were shy. Oh, how? Okay, but you're it's, true. Shy. You're in public. it's true. But I understand you. Yeah. You I, know, I, I, especially that, when that's you're in the public eye. You're, you're yeah, in the, you've been in the media. He would tell mean, you. You speak for parliament. Yes. Yeah, she's talking about one of our cameras. <laughs> she's, she's recognizing some faces here because yeah. obviously we're city, city. TV, City FM, we have a good relationship with Parliament. Sure, so sure. obviously our, our personnel here interact a lot with Kate. So she sees familiar faces here. If you're wondering who she's talking about. It feels about, like home. It feels good, <laughs> good. It's home for you. It feels like home. All right, so let's talk about that though. Your media background. Yeah. Okay. So you went to study media, journalism. Yes. Okay. So fast forward, I went to sixth form at Accra High. Uh -huh. uh, and then um, after sixth form, I did one year out because my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. And uh, uh, when, I, when I got to university um, um, admission, it was to do drama or something like that. And she said, no way. So I stayed at home for a year. And my sister said, no, she can write. And because I used to like to read a lot and write, okay. so she had a friend at GIJ who said, Okay, let's try her. And then I went, and one thing led to the other, to the other, to the other. And this sounds so familiar. Yeah. The whole thing be, be a oh. lawyer, right? I'm telling you, <laughs> I feel you right now, okay? I do. Okay, but you've, you've blossomed as a journalist and you were at GBC. Yes. Now, I'm told that GBC probably has one of the best training programs. You're a journalist in Ghana. They actually, I mean, things are done by the book there. Yeah. So people who have been through that system, you can tell the difference in, in their training, their knowledge of the industry, and about executing things properly when it comes to media. Tell us about what you learned um, at GBC. At the, at the time when we got to GBC, you, um, it was at the time when the culture of silence was being lifted. Uh, mind mm -hmm. you, um, it was in 1996, so okay. the culture of silence had just been lifted. People didn't have, there, were really, there was only Radio Gold and then Joy. And uh, in fact, so we started, and then um, our colleagues were Kwame, Kwame uh, Komla, may he rest oh, in wow. peace. Um, we did the training together, uh, but he had to go to Joy. Okay. Um, and then um, there was Fifi who did radio, there was Atu Swatson, uh, oh. Kofi Chakono, Kokstar Maklo. So uh, that was the time wow. when everyone was coming up. So um, we had to go to. We went to GBC, yeah. and at the time, you did your practical attachments, and then you went on to, if you found the job, did it, uh, do it. And uh, I remember that they said there was a show, and it was a new show, mm -hmm. and nobody you know, is really interested in waking up at 4 a.m. to come to the show. Would you like to do it? And I said, yes, we, together with a few of my other colleagues, okay. we said yes. And they said, okay. So we woke up and then we went. First day they made me a floor manager. Oh. And my colleague was put on air the very first time. So I said, look, this is not going to happen. <laughs> so after the, after the show, I went to, um, again, may he rest in peace, Wallace Bampoad, I'm sure you do know him. Um, anybody who's in the industry would know Uncle Wallace. So uh, I went to him and said to him that, I really don't want to be a, a, floor, a floor manager. manager. I said, look, if you're hungry enough, I'll give you a camera. So this man gives me a camera, and I remember it like today. I went and stood at a, in a traffic with, a, he gave me a producer, obviously. So I went and stood in a traffic, and I was just doing, he said, you know what, let's do a Vox Pop. So just we like selected that. a question, and I was, I was asking people that maybe, would you wear secondhand clothes? You know, random, random things, things like that. Mm -hmm. And it caught on like a house on fire. And that's how I was introduced to uh, television wow. you would come at 4 a.m and mind you this is like a side hustle because our main job was in the newsroom okay so let's say if you're in the morning shift we start at 8 30 would come at 4 a.m finish breakfast show by eight o'clock come to the newsroom work till two 
and then go home. And then, go home. And then okay. the, the cycle starts the next day. Okay. Eventually, we got into news reading and then got into um, production and then got into uh, uh, presentations and interviews. I remember wow. one of the key interviews at the time was a program called News Conference where you had presidential candidates like at that time mm -hmm. television is not what it was not what it is today no. so it was a big deal I'm sure it was yeah. a big deal so yeah <laughs> that's how we, we we started I mean we were fortunate to have mentors that mm. were you know very keen on helping us and making sure that we did the right, right thing then. so yes television but would always be my first love you tried your hands at everything a bit of everything yes yes, from yes behind yes, the camera yes. in front of the camera in front of the camera everything. everything so you had to go to mcr you had to yeah. go to vcr sometimes you would direct the news sometimes you would go on production you would edit you would spend time on editing bench you go to post-production the whole nine you yards literally you could run this whole show <laughs> by yourself when, when my well, nine to five feels i'm coming <laughs> Yeah, back. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so then people will be wondering, you've got this fabulous media background. What happened with the transition from media to parliamentary affairs? Okay, so Kate is Director of, of Public Affairs for the Parliament of Ghana. How did you get to Parliament? Um, again, I think, you know, um, you know, the earlier uh, person that was interviewed was talking about God, you know, planning things. Yeah. I think I believe in predestination because I never actually thought... When I set out, uh, you know, in my career, I thought I was going to be doing documentaries mm. for a living because that's what I like to do. That's okay. what I still like to telling do. Telling stories. Yes, okay. telling okay. stories. And that's why I thought this is a very beautiful view yeah. and can tell a very beautiful okay. story. That's what I thought I was going to do. But I went, you know, I, after my um, um, journalism training, uh, there was always a, a little hunger for more. So I went back to school and I did a, a master's degree in international communications okay. with emphasis okay. on political communications, a political economy. So when oh. I came back to um, work uh, in Ghana, I had a, a very romantic <laughs> idea in my mind that, oh, now I'm a political economist. Uh -huh. I have to work <laughs> in a political <laughs> environment. So I was looking for a job, basically. Okay. And then I saw the adverts in, in the, the papers for Parliament and uh, looking for a deputy director. So randomly, because I had applied to a few other places, I applied. Okay. And then I, I had to leave town. But I was out of town when I was told that I had been shortlisted. Because at that time, the Parliament workspace was is still very male-dominated. So um, mm -hmm. a position like that, entry point, less than 30 years, it was a big deal. Yeah. So someone advised me that it's not likely that you get it because one, you're female. Wow. Two, because you're a bit too And this young. was when? What year was this? Um, this was 2004. Wow. So as, as recent as that, people still people thought still that. People still had those Yes, and it was a male. Ideals. It was a male uh, a benevolent person trying to encourage. thought he was doing you a favor. Yes, he said, look, I think you're a bit too young. And this is a position that they may not give to a female. But I was outside of town when someone called me and said, look, you've been shortlisted. So you should calm down. Yeah. So I came down. And then when I went for the interview, when I, I so I, I had even forgotten my certificates and everything. When I entered the lobby and I saw the people who were coming for the interview, I said to them that, look, this job is mine. It's mine. So I told the person selecting the, P, the you know, the interviewers, the interviewees that, look, let me quickly go home and get my certificates and come. So reschedule mine. So I go in and I come back. And then the rest, they say, is, it's is cliche. It <laughs> they didn't know who they were dealing with. No, no. I the, spoke yeah. so much that the man said, What's wrong with you? How much do you want us to pay you? <laughs> so, like that. so she said, how much do you want us to pay you? And I mentioned some ridiculous amount. He said, hey, are you a serious person? But I knew then that I was going to get the job. And I'm grateful that I got it because, again, it was a learning curve for me. Yeah. Um, it was a, t you know, um, I don't know what the television landscape is now mm -hmm. but at the time when we used to do tv people worried about what you looked like yes. people worried about you know it, so it wasn't really your problem yeah. uh, you know what you wore your hair and everything so all i did was try to be smart in my head mm -hmm. and ask the relevant questions my clothes were going to come mm -hmm. if i put on too much weight my producer was going to <laughs> arrange for me to go you know to a gym and then i moved from that space and the thing too is that when you're working in the media People tend to treat you differently. Mm -hmm. So the politicians were my friends. Mm -hmm. They were very respectful of mm -hmm. me. They respected my views. Yes. And then when I shifted, reality check. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, now that you're actually working in parliament, right. things changed? Obviously, because you are no longer 
the celebrity that they they used to see mm. and now they they so one week party a says oh this girl she's ndc we will suck her when we come oh, next week oh this girl she's npp so you've been tagged both ways left, I, right, you, you know how like you throw ping pong <laughs> all over <laughs> the place really all over the place but i guess um yesterday at a function someone said something and it resonated with me that look if that happens, then you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. When everybody's mm -hmm. accusing you of belonging to the mm -hmm. other side. So I said, okay, I'll take consolation mm -hmm. in that. I must be doing something right. So that's how I ended up in parliament. Okay. And uh, I had very good people to work with. Uh, support system, again, was... I've been, I think, fortunate in, in, that, in that sense. I always have one person or two people holding my hand and telling me, this is the door that you should be looking at opening. So, yeah. Right. You were deputy director from 2004. I remember for a while they had you down as acting director, and I, I encountered you once, and I thought it's about time they changed this acting you know, because you were acting for so long. For so but long. But now you are the yes, yes, yes. Director. You know, um, unfortunately, my boss, who was my senior colleague in the newsroom, oh. was the director. May he rest in peace. A very, very nice person he was. Um, he had not been well, and so I was acting, hoping that you know he would he come back better. and then come by the position. Unfortunately, things happened and he couldn't make it. And then you know when yeah. it was time to confirm me, this girl she belongs to this party. <laughs> this person she likes this person. It happened again. Her nose is too flat. Her nose is too pointed. She is still this too. Anything so, people could pick yes. on. Yes, and especially if you're female. It is twice as hard. You put in twice the amount of work that your male colleagues put in, you get one tenth of the recognition that they you know get. So that's still, it, it is a man's it's world. Still a problem. It there is a man's you, world. Even though you've been in this role pretty I, much. Uh, yes, yes. Since that it's one of it's one of the main problems that I think female professionals have. Uh, and again, when sometimes you tend to be um, uh, uh, forward, they say you're too much. Yes. So sometimes you yourself, in order to preserve yourself, decide to peel back. But I've got to the point, I guess, uh, as I'm growing older, to the point where I'm not peeling back for anybody. If you can't Don't. deal with it, it would be your problem that's having it. absolutely nothing to do with, with me. me. Fantastic. So, yeah, that's where we that's are it. now. Deal with it. And it's working very well for me because now I people know that. <laughs> but they've always known that, but now they are sure. <laughs> they know for sure. <laughs> Give us a, a quick view or idea from where you sit as director of PR at Parliament, what, what, what your typical day is like? People really don't I mean, understand. Okay. It's, it's very unpredictable. That's what I can say. Mm, it's very unpredictable. Mm. Today, for instance, is starting as a normal day. Anything can happen and that will sort of change your day. But on a regular day, if Parliament is sitting, um, if you are sitting at 10 o'clock, you get there probably a bit earlier. Make sure the order paper is in, is in place. Make sure that your galleries are okay. If you are receiving visitors, we have a visitors uh, program unit. So um, we have people manning the visitors, speaking to them about how parliament functions and all those things. Mm. And then making sure that they get a tour of the house, sit in the uh, public gallery to observe proceedings. If they need to see a particular person, we arrange that for them. Okay. We also facilitate communications between parliament and the various publics. So for instance, if there is a bill, and that's one of the things I like to talk about, if I get another opportunity to speak about Parliament, okay. the you know the cycle of a, a how a bill becomes law. At some point in in the process, um, invitations are sent out for people to you know mm -hmm. give their opinion. Mm -hmm. Usually, we don't get that much, so it's well. one of the things that I think that we should pay attention to our citizens because it will help us and it will reduce the amount of conversation about okay. negative perceptions <laughs> of parliament. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I want to put you in a little bit of trouble. No, don't worry. I, I, a little bit. Because I'm sure people are curious. You interact with our parliamentarians on a regular basis. Who are some of the most troublesome ones? The ones who cause a lot, of the, the mischievous ones. Well, and who, who, are, who are the sweethearts? Who are the ones that you are see, so lovely? I will, I, will, I, <laughs> I will get into so much trouble. But you see, uh, personalities. Yes. People are different. There are some people, there are some people that you think are not actual sweethearts, but they are actually really, 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 like really, who? really like nice. I, I'm not going to mention like anybody's like name. You know, I'm so not going to, I'm not, but, but you see, the thing is that, um, what rather I'd like to talk about is the fact that, look, when people you're are talking... You're such a media person. You see what she did there? What? You see what she did there? <laughs> How she sidestepped the question. Well, I love well, it. When, okay, when people one, are... Can I, can I just, just one person? Yes, yes, yes. And we really, we love him here. Yeah, who? We call him the Terminator. Who Do you is know that? him? No, you tell me. Oh, the Minister for Roads. 
<laughs> you see, I have to recuse myself because this is my personal friend. Ah, okay. I have to recuse my friend yes. myself but because this is my personal. We have lunch in my office every day. So if oh. I say any nice thing, it will so be because he pays for the lunch. I don't. <laughs> So, but so, yes, hey, hello, how are you? You know, we have a nickname. We have, we've given him so many nicknames in our you office. We also have nicknames for him. Oh, we, 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 call, we, we you call, call him Terminator. Terminator we, we, in our office, because we call him, when he hits the road and he's angry. We call him a time Isaiah because anytime we are hot, he comes to save us. Really? <laughs> so, and you oh, know, he's a twin, so he's a ta. So we call him a time Isaiah because when he comes, you, you can be sure that <laughs> we'll get lunch and we'll get a little extra too. So, yeah, him, I can really say much sounds about like, it. He, he seems like a very interesting personality. All, honestly. Of, the, all of them actually. Are. Yeah. You know, there are people, of course, personalities are different. You have, um, I have my f personal friends, so I don't want you to. You don't want to go to yes. class. Yes. No yeah, worries, I'll let you they off are, the They are all my people. Okay. You know? <laughs> no problem, no problem. But there's, there's so many other things you do that people don't know about. And I know you have a charitable side as well. Let's talk about that. Um, it's one of the things that make me very happy. You know, um, Kokui, I, one of the things that growing up I dealt with was PCOS. And it was um, from maybe, uh, it was diagnosed at 26. Wow. Yes. Okay. And so it was, I had a hysterectomy at 36. You so, know, so I, I, I'll pause just to explain what PCOS is, is. It's polycystic ovary syndrome. Yeah. It's a condition a lot of women go through where cysts actually grow on your ovaries, ovaries yes. and cause all kinds of problems. Yes. So yeah. um, at, at, at some point, you know, one of the things it does is that it causes infertility. Yes. Yes. So childbirth was a bit of a, a difficulty for me eventually when i had kids i was just looking for just one child to you know yeah. you know to have as an accessories and i had two you had twins yes double blessing so that's how the dual concept thing came about mm -hmm. so you know do I, I, was, I was playing with two feet two ideas i said okay let me go with dual concept okay. because as i had the twins from day one i saw that you can have two people Born on the same day, at the same time, but very different. <laughs> yes, yeah, so different. that's how the dual concept thing came about. And then, because I had also grown up in various, I mean, I grew up in Osu, in Abuzoka, in yes. Suman, and I'd seen that some people go without. So at a very early age, mm. we started giving out our baby clothes. So we registered the company in, you know, in the twins' mm. name, Dual Concept Foundation. And so I don't have any clothes from when my kids were. I don't have any memories because okay. we gave them out. So that's how the Dual Concept thing started. We started with also Children's Home. We went to Nungwa. We've gone to Teshi. We, wow. so, what we, so as they've grown, I've tried to grow the charity with them. So there's a lot of peer mentorship. And they understand that giving is, is what you do mm -hmm. if you are grateful. Okay. You don't need to have a whole mansion before you decide to share with people. Okay. That's how the dual concept thing is about. Now, because they are, uh, they are preteen, we are doing peer mentorship where we are giving out, we, we, are, we stop giving out clothes, we are now giving out books, we are now Great. trying to help people with education, we are now trying to grow together because Kokui, our kids will be maybe in the Kohon Sad, wherever they are going to school. Don't forget that the people they are growing with, if we don't equip them, they will grow with them. Yes. And when we are not here, yeah. they have to deal with them. Yes. So grow them together. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea a Dual Concept Foundation. That's a and thankfully, um, it's, it's doing um, well. We, we, have a, we had a girl up uh, program not so long ago. And that was my first attempt at anything female because oh. I, I felt that there's too much attention on the girl child to the detriment of the boy child. You have a point. Maybe yes. one day we'll have a conversation on I that was, as well. Uh, yes, yes. I, was, I have three sons. Yes, so yeah. you, it would, you would, you would um, relate. I, I understand relate. what you mean. I mean, mean. Uh, your son goes to school, Kokui, and then there is a, an incident involving a girl and a boy. And then the boy gets accused. The boy gets accused. And yes. then you get it at, to the bottom of the matter. I find that it's actually the, the girl who instigated it. And I said to them yeah. that, look, there's no one to defend my son but me. Mm -hmm. So we need to pay we attention to, do that. to that. Okay, okay child, yeah. Oh, I wish we had more time with you. But we will find we, time. We will find more time. Mm -hmm. We'll have you back. But you've got to tell us about tuck and tie. A little tuck here. A little tuck there. Never hurt anybody. Okay. And the tuck and tie has a hashtag, Duku up. Again, you know, my mom. My mom is my role model. She's my everything. Right. So my mom, she's a, a, a fabric a, I don't know, a trader. That's okay. So right, our yeah. family business yes. is selling cloth. Ah, yes. So my mom, right. my mom has shops at Kaneshi. My sister's oh, done. My okay. sister does that. So uh, one day I said, look, what if I need a side hustle? Mm -hmm. And my grandmother 
uh, both grandmothers were traders too. You know, my one of them had a Jewish shop, the other one sold dukus. Okay. My mom gave gifted me a duku from my grandmother that's 60 years old. Mm -hmm. So I said, look, why don't I turn this into a business? So now I sell duku. I'm a duku seller. You do? I sell duku. Ah, but you, you are not telling me. Don't oh, worry, Kate. I sell duku. I'll, I'll you have a customer. In fact, you, you have to come and uh, model my dukus for come. me. I will come, So we, we sell dukus and we sell cloth. Authentic Ghanaian. So you okay. could find this. This Fabric. is from Selena. Yeah, but you can Selena find something like this. Okay. You know, attack and tie, you know, the cloth, and then you can have it made. Oh, this so, is fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's what we do, attack and tie. We, we've got a few messages for you as well. Uh, someone says, Mommy is fluent. They're talking about you. They love oh, the way yeah. you are flowing. <laughs> really intelligent. Thumbs up. Watching from Takwa. This is Adjoa oh, Aduma who you, said thank that. You, Adjoa. A couple of you are happy to see me back on TV. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be back on TV. Keep your messages coming in. It's hashtag Breakfast Daily, as you know. Um, I w Kate, you need to come back. I will. Now I, I, I inducted will, I, you into Breakfast Daily <laughs> family. In fact, City family. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm happy to be here. So you have to I'm come back. To be, I, I would like to come back. But before we go, in your role as Director of PR for Parliament, what do you want the public to know? First of all, that Parliament is for the people. You know, when you talk about Parliament, you're talking about the House of Representation. And so it's the house for the people. If yes. people didn't go out to vote, there wouldn't be a parliament. And so people need to take ownership of parliament. Mm -hmm. You should tell us what you want us to do for you. But in doing that, be decorous, please. So when you come on our Facebook page and you write all those not so nice things, I won't reply. But if you are nice, then I will reply. So let, let's be decorous in our language. Let us tell people, tell our representatives what we want. Be part of the process. Okay. And at various stages, there are programs that we've put in place to make sure that citizens are actively engaged at the, at the young uh, the second cycle institutions. We have the youth parliament, at the tertiary institutions, you have the student parliament. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who are out of school, there are other things that you can, you can do to engage with us. You can write to us, you can call us, um, you can come to parliament, and you are welcome to come to parliament at any time. People don't think that they can come to parliament. Mm -hmm. Come to parliament, don't wear a party t-shirt, don't carry any weapon that can hurt you or anybody else, mm. and be decently dressed. By decently dressed, you can wear anything, just don't wear shorts or spaghetti straps. Come okay. to parliament, we are there. And if you, if you don't find us, find us on social media, we will answer your queries. Okay. Please be involved, be involved. You heard it from the woman herself, be involved. We're so glad you spent time with us this Thank morning, Kate. I know how busy me. you are. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. I'm really, really happy to be here. It's been a and pleasure. And I hope I come back soon. Yes, come back soon. <laughs> I'm coming for my duku as well. I'll send I'll your duku to you. I'll be rocking my tuck and tie. Yes, and it's okay. Odasubo. You remember Odasubo, Kayo? The Odasubo that my grandmother, Akua Kate, used to wear. Is what we are saying. Don't laugh. <laughs> so, so, Mama, so, Mama we, yeah. no, so you can wear your white jeans. You can wear this and have a nice. Ben future. Oh, future. Pe, 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 pe. I have a fine. small model called Aku. Aku is fine. She's only four, but if you see her oh, yeah. in her duku and her nice outfit, whatever that she wears, oh. perfect. Take Mama. it Ghana outside of Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Kate Addo is Director of Public Relations at Parliament of Ghana. A fantastic woman. I'm sure you've been inspired by thank her this you, morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll be right thank back. You, it's Breakfast you, Daily on City thank TV. Thank you for having me. <laughs>